to know the voice of God. When he speaks and how he speaks. And the devil is trying to steal your faith. Without your faith, you're a deformed Christian. You with me? Without faith. You can talk about Inkabob, Succubus, you can talk about Jezebel, you can talk about Black Down Spirit, and that's so good that you get in a battle with that. But without faith, you got nothing. Yeah. You're nothing but, you nothing but empty words. Yeah. Without faith, without faith, without faith, you can't do nothing. <laughs> today we find in the churches today, the spiritual warfare, the battle, the battle today, the about Jezebel, succubus, uh, suicide spirit, infirmity spirit, all these kind of demonic spirits, all these battles that are going on. And today, the silent killer in the church today is a lack of faith. That's why today you see these people, they got names, but they have no faith. And if you have no faith, you have no anointing, and all you know but an influencer. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> influencer with gifts. You're the son of the devil. Come on. Preach it. I don't care how much likes you got. I don't care how much social media you carry, but you don't carry the anointing. You don't carry no presence of God. Jesus rebuked the disciple. No faith, no faith, no purpose, no destiny, no Jesus, no heaven. The devil knows. While you are fighting the devils out there, the devil is killing you and robbing your faith. And, and, and the crazy thing about faith, the only religion that got faith is Christianity. Because every other religion, they have belief, but they have no faith. The devils believe, but they have the faith. They tremble. So the only religion that carries faith is Christianity. When I was a devil worshiper, I believed the devil. I had hope, but I had no faith. Because faith is a supernatural thing. Are you with me so far? You with me? See, what is, what is faith? Faith is to, is to believe God despite whatever appearance appears to you. It's obeying God in despite of your consequences. Faith is building the knowledge. Faith is building knowledge on God. That's why the devil is trying to steal your time, your Bible, your talking with God, and your prayer time. Because that produces faith. Today the church, all we have today in the church, we don't have faith. We have influence. And the reason the devil was able to take a third of the angels with him because he had influence in heaven. In the church, we have influencers, but we have no faith. And that's why Jesus cursed the fig tree. The reason it had an appearance of something, but it produced no fruit. You can fake gifts, but you can't fake fruit. Great faith, a great God. Small faith, a small God. You need to believe, you need faith to believe that God is in the present storm that you stand in today. Don't indicate, just don't indicate the absence of God because of the storm you're in. Amen. Spiritual warfare. I'm teaching you spiritual warfare, baby. Ain't not, ain't, ain't not, listen, ain't, you, it's not fighting Julio Fred, baby. Ain't gonna get you nowhere. It's, if you have no faith, you move nothing in the spirit. If you have no faith, you can't walk in the spirit. If you have no faith, you can't destroy nothing. If you have no faith, you can't walk with God. The devil knows if I take your faith, you got nothing to show up to the battlefield. Preach it. I don't care how much theology you know, I don't care how much how much scripture you know, I don't as much as that is good to know, but without faith, without faith, without faith, you got nothing, 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 nothing. Without faith, you might as well you might as well pack it up and go home.
I can prove it to you. Paul had to have faith to come here and leave a deposit to get this place. And he had to have faith to say, would John Ramirez come? Would Daniel come? Would Greg Locke come? He had to have faith to believe God that he'll bring us here to serve you. Because we're not here to impress you, we're here to serve you. I was out there standing, people said, why are you standing with the common folks? Jesus was so common that when he came to arrest them, they had to ask him, who's Jesus? Can he fit in? See, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm moved by what I believe in. Because my faith makes me believe it's not by sight, it's by faith. Oh man, this is, this is, I'm, I'm just trying to go quick because I got something else to say. Say it. Thank you, When you trust in the name of the Lord, you trust in his character. That's why the devil is trying to distort the character of God in your life. Because if he messed that up, you can't see God. Oh, baby, I, I had a PhD in witchcraft. When I came to Jesus, I got off the little bus. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the devil is trying so hard to distort the character of God in your life. Because the character of God is built around faith to know who he is. Because you can't see him. He cannot be explained to you. He has to be revealed, he has to, be revealed to you by faith. God is too big to be explained. You can explain Buddha. He was a Chick-fil-A. I was over there. I saw Buddha. <laughs> I saw Muhammad. Allah. He was Allah in Spanish. I think it's chicken wings. <laughs> the, the amazing thing about Christianity that every other God, in every other God, in every other religion, you have to chase after them. You have to strap a bomb on you to impress your God. But the, the, the God of Christianity, we, we have to chase. In, in, in other religion, we chase after their God. But the Christianity, God chase after you. How, so how, how does Satan attack our faith? I'm glad you asked me. <laughs> it's easy if I can distort the card see when I was in witchcraft my mind my assignment was to occupy space in real estate in your mind the battlefield's here if you can't beat me here you can't beat me out there so, so my, my job was to distort see if I don't distort God's character then you still have a place to run to and repent. But if I distort his character, you got nowhere to repent. I got you isolated. You with me? My hope, my hope is nothing but the blood and the cross of Jesus Christ. That's why the devil has separated Jesus from the cross in the church today. So today we don't preach Jesus on the cross, the blood, because the only thing that makes you righteous is the blood of Jesus. So the devil has removed Jesus from the cross. So that's why we preach a new age, because it sounds like Christianity. Oh, we going there. <laughs> When you grow in the knowledge of God, and then you grow in faith. When you grow in the knowledge of God, you grow in faith. Yeah. That's what the only, listen, the only, the, the only reason the devil has the upper hand in you when you walk in darkness, when you walk in bondage, when you walk in, in when you walk in trials and tribulation, when you walk in bondage and stronghold, he attacked, all hell attacks after you. Where is your faith? 
the only religion that carries something so unique and so powerful is so different than the other religion. And the devil knows that. The devil understands that if he takes your faith, he takes your God. Listen, if, if, listen, the Bible, the Bible, is ne the Bible never, the Bible never say believe only. The Bible said believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible, the Bible says have faith, but have faith in God, not faith in yourself or ministers. You see these wacky people today. You bless them and then they turn on you. I wish they called me. I get 718 on them. I get real head on them. Because you see, the deliverance ministry is a small ministry that God has put on the earth to complement each other, to honor each other, to validate each other, to respect each other, to grow together, to bring the trophy home together. I, I, I can't get away from this. With Gray. Come on. Come on. Yeah. I'll say that last. Hey, how are you? How did you use you in Atlanta? 5,000 people. Now they can't take you to Chick fil A. Oh, come on. Come on. Somebody got to see it. Hello. Where is the honor in the body of Christ? Where is the loyalty in the body of Christ? Where is the respect in the body of Christ? I can disagree with you but still love you. I can still disagree with you and still honor you. Just because we have a dozen of eight, one breaks, I don't throw the other eleven away. Preach it! Where is the honor in the house of God? I think I should just. <laughs> I think I'm the only. I think I'm the only fool that pray for a whole bunch of people and honor men and men of God, regardless how God uses you. We all come, we, we 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 like a crayon box. We come in 64 colors, Crayola, but we all can paint a nice color for Jesus. You might be the red crayon. I might be the blue crown, you might be the yellow crown, but we all in the same box, baby. And we all color. And when God takes it out of the box, we call our masterpiece for the Lord Jesus Christ, people. I'm not better than you, you're not better than me. If it wasn't for Jesus, this room would be empty. When you sit in a church that has no word of God, you sit under a curse. Because the word of God comes by faith. And by faith, even the word of God. So when you sit in a church that is dead, you sit under a curse. Oh, let me stop. Where's my, where's my home girl? Huh? Yo, what's up with these lights? I'm out of pressure, bro. I'm Puerto Rican. I already got a tan, brother. What's up, what's up? Brother. You, you was your mic. What's your mic, brother? What's going on? We getting get up here? Julio. Get the mic. People, let me just say this. Let me take, I, I still got a little time. I want to get a mic for her, please. That's my homegirl in a circle. See, let me just, I'm going to say this the way it is. I didn't know she was going to be here. And the Lord said, the Lord gave me a message to finish, and I can't finish it. The Lord said he wants me to go a different direction. And, and I know she was going to be here. But... And I'm just going to say it the way it is, and this is just to give honor to God. She called Paul, and she explained the situation to Paul. And Paul said, come, I'll buy you a plane ticket. 
Yeah. See, that's the kingdom. That, 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 that's, the, that's the kingdom. That's how we roll. That's, you know, I, I was, I was in, Greg Law came to that meeting. I was in Nashville. 900 people came on a Monday. And there was, a, and the thing that touched me the most, there was a, a girl from South Korea. She came with a suitcase and a, and a passport and a plane ticket and never been to America to get deliverance. And, and she came and she got deliverance. But th this is, this is, this, you see, her, her breakthrough was not the, it didn't stop on the deliverance. Her breakthrough was that the, the, the pastor that, that led the meeting paid for her hotel. And then on top of that, her ticket was so messed up that the Lord said to me, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, the Lord said to me, buy her a ticket. I got on Delta and I got her a ticket. It was over $900. I got her a ticket. See, see, she didn't only get the deliverance, but she was able to see the hands and feet of Jesus in her life. You see? And, and I'll end with this. i take another five, ten more minutes. Because I got something special for you. This is a person that used to hate Christians. This is a person that I would do witchcraft and kill your mother, kill your father. I'd kill your goldfish. I'd kill your cat. Anything that will bring pain to your life, I will go after the witchcraft. You could see me because I lived in the shadows of the demonic. I lived in the tombs of the demonic. I astral projected, drank animal blood, cut myself, drank my own blood. I will leave my body. I know how to leave my body and come back in and visit your house in the spirit because you had no discernment. You didn't see me come in and you didn't see me leave. I will do witchcraft. I will sit home and sit under this big pot that had nine cemetery, had nine hospital, nine different jail cells, and had nine uh, asylum of, of, of the cuckoo house that wherever I put your name in, I'll send you there. I was a man that was, that would live beyond the shadows of the demonic. I lived in a place that Christian couldn't find me because I was stealth, I was untraceable. I would sit in the churches and curse the churches. I would, I would go up to the church's door and urinate and curse churches. I would put witchcraft on people and give them miscarriage and abortion and kill the baby in the womb because I knew that was the church of Jesus Christ. I hated you. I was your number one public enemy in your life for 25 years. You couldn't stop me. You couldn't move me. You couldn't, you couldn't control me because I, was, I knew how to fight in spiritual warfare and atmospheres and and, and and atmospheres of places you could you know what's crazy about christian the reason you got turbulence in your life because the devil brought you down to his level and christians are not meant to fight down here because you see when you fight down here it's demonic turbulence but god has called us to be eagles you need to take the devil up higher when you take him higher he can't fight up there because you sit in the third heaven with Jesus Christ. The highest of the highest of the highest of the highest of the highest heaven. That means no devil can breathe up there. No witchcraft can breathe up there. No, he lives up there. But Christ, and Christ alone lives in the atmosphere of stratosphere. An atmosphere beyond human comprehension. Beyond the demonic. And when you take the devil up there, he can't breathe. He has to let you go. But you fight him down here, where he fights the best with his turbulence. Eagles. Sometimes crows get on top of eagles and peck the eagles. But when the eagles take off and take the crow to an atmosphere that he can't breathe, it's unfamiliar, unknown to him, he drops off. I wish a witch was here tonight. I promise you, I'll be your, I'll be your huckleberry. I'll give you a perm. I show you that my button is bigger than your button. Matter of fact, I write you a recipe of witchcraft that I still remember. 
and you can use it and I will destroy, dismantle it, I will uproot it and send it back to the sender because I live in the pages of Psalms 91. I live in the page of Psalms 23, 5. God prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. They can't do nothing. I don't live by the opinion of people. I live by the truth of God. Because the truth of God is the only thing that can set you free. Man. Facts can be changed, but truth cannot be changed. So when I live in the shadows of the demonic, when I live in the atmospheres of the demonic, I know witchcraft in the highest level. The person that did my, when I sold my soul to the devil, the person that did the ceremony, he was Fidel Castro's right hand man in witchcraft from Cuba. And he came to America to do my ceremony. 17 warlocks sold their soul to the devil at night. And I was the only one to get the mark of the beast carved into my flesh. The mark of the beast is standing to 21 rows of the dark side. 21 means Timbala. That means the number of 21 of all the cult religions on the planet that humanity is trapped in, except Christianity. And when you live in the shadows of the demonic, you wear that mark out of 17 warlocks. I was the only one that got the mark carved into my flesh. I sat in the tombs, I sat in, I had a contract with marine and water spirits. That's why I get a little angry when I see Christians celebrate Halloween. Yeah. 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 And in 1999, I don't know how much time I have left, but in 1999, Jesus knew my address. An amazing, amazing, the amazing thing that at seven and a half years old, I was recruited from the second heaven. A necklace of the seven demonic African powers fell in the second heaven, and I put it on my neck to paraphrase. <laughs> and after the age of eight, I was at the witch's house getting my first ceremony. At the age of eight, I was going to demon church from, the, from seven in the evening to five in the morning. You can't even go to church for two hours, you fall asleep. <laughs> That tells me you spiritually dead. Listen, the true Christian carried three identities. The true Christian carried three identities. They're the body, they're the bride, and they're the army. The true believer carried three identities. I'm the bride, I'm the body of Christ, and I'm the army of force to be reckoned with. Where's the, where's the piano person? Oh, they, you already paid them, they quit. <laughs> you, 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 know, you know what's amazing, my brothers and sisters? And when I got saved, the amazing thing about hell, I, left, I died in my apartment in 1999. I left my body on a train going to hell faster than anything on the earth and the train was filled with people going to hell. It was filled with people. You couldn't see their faces and Jezebel was on the train because I had a contract with Jezebel because I know how to send it. I know how to send the Ahab spirit to churches to destroy the leadership. Listen, because without an Ahab spirit in the church to dumb down the ministry of leadership, Jezebel won't come because Jezebel only come for true reason to kill the anointing and the anointer. So if I send the spirit of Ahab to the ministry, to the leadership, I dumb them down to a form of godliness. And then, listen, because Ahab is the only spirit that tolerates Jezebel. So that's why you, you go to church and you see Jezebel in the church, but your pastor can't see her because he's living under Ahab's spirit. So he's able to tolerate her because he's on the Ahab spirit. And the Ahab spirit is the only spirit that tolerates Jezebel. So in 1999, I was on the train and Jezebel in demonic terms were calling me traitor. And I did the most witchcraft ever on this planet, the highest witchcraft ever. I put witchcraft in my landlord, on my landlord. She rented me an apartment that would belong to some Jamaican people. 
And the Jamaican people came to claim their apartment. I did witchcraft on them. They got beheaded. Hey, can you hear me? I did witchcraft on the lady. And I lived there for one year rent free. She never came back to pick up the rent. And then when I moved out, I saw a week later in the streets collecting soda pop bottles because she had lost her memory to the witchcraft that I did to her. So I lived in the shadows of the demonic. The devil had a meeting one time and the devil said, told the warlocks and the elders of the witchcraft world, I can destroy you, I can destroy you, I can destroy you, but John Ramirez I love, I can't lose him. I lived in the shadows of the demonic to the most highest level of astral projecting, the highest level of witchcraft. I had a book in my hands that was the only person in the whole planet Earth, the third person that had this book with symbols, ancient symbols of the demonic to put witchcraft on people. I lived beyond the tombs and the, and the bones and the blood and animal blood and human blood, even almost sacrificed my first human being. And in 1999, and, and when I was eight years old, a pastor passed me by. He prayed for everyone but me. So at home, I had a broken father. They didn't know how to love because no one ever loved him. And my father couldn't love me, and I couldn't love my daughter. And the devil said, I loved you. The devil loved me for 25 years. But he had to let me go. And let me give you, let me give the, the people in Hollywood a little message. As demonic and despicable they are. The devil can never love you, but you made an image of God. The devil is the great pretender. He pretends on everything to own legal rights and real estate in your life. And when I went to hell, when I stepped on the grounds of hell, it breathes like a person. And then the, 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 the torment in hell wraps around you like a python. And every time it squeezes you, you get tormented. And the ground breathes like a human being when you step on it. And as I was running to the portals of hell, the devil appeared and said, I loved you like a son. I adopted you at the age of eight. I showed you secrets of the demonic kingdom. And why would you want to leave me now when I gave you status and I gave you power? And I gave, I gave you a position in my kingdom. And I said, I don't know why I'm leaving. I don't know what's going on. Why am I in this place? And he said, I have to destroy you, break my heart. And when he went to grab me, the cross of Calvary showed up in hell. Because all I told Jesus was, if you're bigger than my daddy, the devil, you show me tonight, you leave me alone. And Jesus took the Pepsi challenge. <laughs> and showed up in a place Hell is called the absence of God. And heaven is the presence of God. And when hell couldn't hold me because of the cross, he had to let me go and I went back into my body. And every knee and every tongue will confess. And at night my knee bent and I confess that he was sick in my life. So my story, it is a mess. That when I gave God, when I gave God the pen back of my story, He wrote a bestseller. Same thing when everyone is sitting here, and everyone is out there. You are a book in heaven. Give God back the pen, and let Him write your story. So when Jesus sit in His library, He'll read your story because He wrote it. If you write your own story, baby, you're gonna have to go. To Staples and get a lot of white out. <laughs> but if he writes it, people will miss you when you leave the earth. And hell will rejoice that you left the battlefield. And you'll make Jesus Christ proud that he picked you. Because God, and I take 30 seconds. God loves the misfit. God gets glory out of the misfit. The rapist, the one that been raped, the one that been molested, the one the gangbanger, the one that went in drugs, the prostitute, 